So hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I crochet, I weave, um, I just spin on a drop spindle and anything else that takes my fancy really. Now today we're looking at all the bits and bobs that I've been making in February. So grab a brew and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. So as I say, we're looking at all the bits and bobs that I've made in February this week. So let's get started with what I'm wearing. Obviously these aren't February makes, but uh, it is what I am wearing. So I have on my spotty tunic, which is a sewing project that I made years ago. Uh, based off a tunic that I already own, so I use that to, to draft my own pattern. This gets an awful lot of wear and I need to make some in some different fabrics as well. And over that I am wearing my Shrug Hug, which is in uh, Jameson uh, yarn, and it's a pattern by Knitting Expat. Obviously I'll put the links down below. Um, where I can put links off Ravelry, I will, and I know Mina on, on Knitting Expat is migrating her patterns over onto Payhip, um, but not everything is there yet, so I'm not sure if this one is or not. Um, so if it isn't, it'll be a Ravelry or an Etsy link. I don't think she's got many patterns on Etsy. Um, but where I can, it'll be off Ravelry. So moving on to finished objects. I'm going to start with a couple of sewing projects. First up, we have the Scoop Pinafore, which is the second version of the Scoop that I've made. The first time I've made it in a fabric that's probably a little bit too drapey, really, for this pattern. This one has a lot more structure. I've used a charcoal Ponte Roma from Minerva, um, who sent me fabrics in return for me, putting a post up on their website. So I'll put a link down below for, um, for that. Um, I do tend to use affiliate links from Minerva, which means if you buy anything by clicking on my link, they send me a bit of money and it doesn't cost you anything different, so win-win. Uh, now this particular Ponte Roma has uh, laser cut pinpricks throughout um, cut over it, so I did pair it with a mustard lining. Um, I didn't worry about getting a stretch lining for this particular project because there's enough give in the, the pattern, there's enough wearing ease for me not to need to worry about stretch on a scoop pinafore. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm planning to remake it in like denim and stuff as well, which won't have any give at all, so um, it's, it's not a garment that needs a lot of stretch. Um, if it was, then I would be looking at getting a stretch lining to put in there as well, but it does give that little pop of colour coming through the fabric. Um, so that's the Scoop Pinafore by So Different. Again, I will, will link down below to all the bits and bobs. And my next finished object is another Minerva project. It's this Calais shirt. Calais? Calais? Uh, it's by Closet Core Patterns and it's got um, options for a crop shirt, a tunic and a dress. Um, I've obviously done the cropped version in this fabulous jungle print. Now uh, I've used the popover placket from the tunic version on mine. Um, the first time I've done a popover placket so it was a little bit fiddly but it's fine. Um, I did manage to place a parrot right where I needed to cut for the, the opening for the, the, the placket which was um, annoying, <laughs> um, but, uh, my own lack of forethought really. Um, so to, to compensate and to make sure there is a parrot on the front of the shirt, I've uh, fussy cut the patch pocket to include a parrot. I wasn't actually going to put the pocket on, but I needed a parrot on the front. Um, one of the things that made me really happy sewing this up was when I realised um, as I applied the band collar that I'd managed to get ahead of a parrot right dead centre in the back of the collar. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Um, the fabric is really soft and drapey, it's a pleasure to wear um, and yeah this has already been worn to, to work so so yeah really pleased with that one and I'm, I can see me making some more um, Calais um, I might make a, a tunic version in like a chambray or something that would be quite cool um, or even in the crop length the, a chambray would be, be pretty good um, so yes yeah, so I have plans for more of those at some point um, so that's my sewing finished objects. I do have another Minerva project on the sewing table cut out ready to go but I'll show you that in March's uh, roundup at the beginning of April. So moving on to knitting uh, finished objects. Now these finished objects have been on the go for a while. 
Um, first up we have the Bundled Up Socks by Knitting Expat, as I say. I'll put a link down below. If it's Ravelry, I'll say that it's Ravelry, but I will just have a look and see if, if she's already migrated this pattern over to, to Payhip, um, in which case I'll link there. Um, this is in the Robin colourway by West Yorkshire Spinners, which is one of their Christmas colourways, so these will be going in the Christmas box, um, probably. Um, I made a little error in sizing on these socks, um, and I'll explain what that is. It's to do with the texture of the stitch pattern. Uh, because the stitches pull in the length of the the fabric as you're knitting and I measured the the top to see when to put my heel in the sole is obviously longer so they're a little bit on the loose side but not to the point where they're not wearable they're fine uh, it's just the the heel sometimes does that up my leg which is not a massive problem uh, particularly if they're in my Christmas box and only being worn for a few days each year um, so yeah, so really pleased with those. I do like knitting expat patterns. Um, I find them quite easy to follow, and the the, the tends she tends to use uh, a lot of knit pearl textures in her socks, which I quite enjoy working up. My next finished object for knitting has actually been on the needles for even longer. I started this project in uh, two thousand and eighteen. And then my, my friends at my online knitting group um, all wanted to, or quite a few of them wanted to, to knit a version of it as well. So we did a little informal knit along uh, from New Year's Eve. Some of them cast on at New Year's Eve, some are finished, some are still working on it. And it is The Oracle um, by Kristen Lehrer of uh, Vull and Vine. Hopefully you're getting a good view of, of what it looks like. If not, I'll, I'll pop a picture up. It's this combination of chevron lace and brioche with an I-cord bind off. I've done the full pie version and back in 2018 I did mess up the, the first lace round which is this chocolatey colour. Um, but it's not like I was going to, to rip back to 2018 and, and try again. Um, so I just went with it. It looks fine and it wears well. It's my first pie shawl and I'm really pleased with it. I've worked it up in Artist Palette Yarns. Now, unfortunately, she's not currently dying, and by the the look of the net message on her Etsy shop, she may not start up again, um, which is a shame, but, you know, life happens. Um, so this isn't it in singles. It's the first project I've... It's the first project I cast on in singles, I believe. It's not the only one I've finished in singles. I've got a couple of other shawls that, that win it in singles as well. Um, and there will be some more work with singles coming up, but more of that uh, next. Because my final yarny finished project um, is a spinning project. I do have a non-yarny project coming up to show you, or two. Um, and that is these three skeins of singles. I have spun myself some singles on my drop spindles. Uh, can you see a colour theme uh, for me at all? Um, anyone tell what my favourite colour is? <laughs> um, so these are all spun up from bats that I got for Christmas from my partner's brother. And they're from Maria Redding Arts. Um, so we have the Griffin, which is part of her um, Alice in Wonderland collection. We have Kings and Queens, which is part of the Narnia collection. And Mr Collins which is part of the Pride and Prejudice um, collection. Now these are part of my fluff to stuff um, projects for, for this year, uh, which is being run by Hey Brownberry, Knitting Expat, and uh, Grace the Babbler, the Babbles Travelling Yarns. Um, it's a reboot of the Spin and Make Along that I did a couple of years ago. Um, so these are going to be knit up into a cowl or shawl, so I need to get them caked up and cast on um, for my first fluff to stuff thing. These two look superb next to each other and then I think that's going to make a really nice contrast. I did um, pick them with a view to working them up together so that I'm, I'm quite pleased with how they've turned out. So that's all my sewing and yarny fibery type projects that I finished in February but I have a couple more to show you. I found a new obsession um, and that is with bead weaving. Um, I've ordered some beads for Sock Madness from uh, Beads Direct, I'll link them down below. They are super speedy on delivery 
<laughs> but that means that I've now got quite a lot of beads from previous years of Sock Madness and ones that will be left over from this year's Sock Madness. I didn't know what to do with them. So I thought I'd have a look at bead weaving. Now in Nottingham, which is the nearest city to me, um, it's not in the same county as me, it's the next county over, but it's it's closer than my county town. Um, but there's a bead shop um, called The Bead Shop Nottingham and their website is Mail Order Beads, so again I will link them down below. And they do kits which they sell through their website as well as on Etsy, um, as well as, as beading supplies and things. So I ordered this one, which is this Art Deco in matte black and gunmetal. Uh, these are all in Mayuki Delicas. Um, so this bracelet was the first bead weaving project that I completed. This is all in peyote stitch, this is even count peyote stitch. Um, so that took me a couple of days, quite enjoyable, quite relaxing. Um, it's come with this type of clasp, this G clasp. I'm not overly keen on this clasp, it doesn't feel massively secure to me. So I will obviously be looking at other ways of fastening projects in the future. The other finished object I want to show you, I didn't quite finish it in February, but I started it in February. And it's again from the Bead Shop Nottingham. And it's it's this peyote stitch, it's odd count peyote owl bracelet. And I'm much happier with the clasp on this because it's actually integrated into the bracelet. So there's a hole here. So that involves some increases. This is an intermediate um, kit, they say. And it's because of these increases and decreases and things. So we're adding beads here to increase to make the hole. And you start at that end. Then you, you bead all the way down. I had to add some rows to make it fit. I actually had to add an extra owl as well to make it fit because it's, it's much shorter than my wrist. And then you create this toggle at the other end. So again, you're, you're adding beads to do that, which will be why it's the intermediate. Um, so that's my second ever bead weaving project finished. Um, so I'm really pleased with those and I can see me doing a lot more. In fact, I've got some more bead weaving to show you in the next section, which is works in progress. So let's get to that now. Um, as we're talking about beads, let's have a look at my work in progress for bead weaving. Now, both the bracelets are peyote stitched. They're both off loom bead weaving projects, um, which basically means just sewing the beads together. My work in progress, it's actually taking me a lot longer than I thought it would being a loom project. I've bought this um, bead loom from Dale Peak or Peak Dale. I'll put a link down below to the company that makes these, but you can buy them all over the place. They're on Etsy and the Big A online retailer and, and all sorts. Um, this is the um, pattern that's on the cover of the box. And they give you a, a colour printed version of the, the pattern for this project. There are some black and white project um, graphs in the, in the kit as well that I maybe should have started with because they're narrower. I'm picking up 60 odd beads at a time on a, a loom needle and placing them underneath the warp threads and, and sending the needle back through for this. So it's taking a bit longer than I anticipated for bead loom weaving, but it's quite enjoyable, it's quite relaxing. Um, the main difference between the, the finished look of the loom bead and the peyote is the way the beads line up on the loom. They're lining up in dead straight rows, um, whereas the peyote stitch it looks a little bit more like a, a brick wall and uh, they're sort of the, each row is offset from from each other um so i'm quite enjoying that i have to do it in in this one in good light because there's black and navy beads and trying to tell the difference when it's it's when the lighting's not good it's it's quite a challenge um a lot of the patterns in in the kits are inspired by native american um beading um my thinking <laughs> I am kind of making some suppositions here a little bit. We know that the Native American tribes did use this sort of a process. I mean, the looms will have looked a bit different, but they use this sort of a process to um, embellish things and to make art and things and bracelets and jewellery and that sort of stuff. Originally using shells and things for their beads. And then with colonisation, glass beads got brought over and they, they developed the process with those. That's that evidenced in, in historical stuff. Um, we also know that beading happened in Egypt and all across Europe in various different ways. I mean, 
we know about sewing beads onto garments, we know about stringy beads and that kind of stuff. I'm thinking that there probably was some form of bead weaving happening in Europe as well. But I needed a bit more research to, to know for certain. Um, so my thinking is that once I learn the techniques, then I can adapt them to, to use more sort of European inspired um, designs that are more from, from my heritage, because obviously I'm not Native American. Um, so yeah, a lot of the patterns that are out there, a lot of the designs that are out there come from, from Native American influence when it comes to, to the loom weaving. Um, but I'm, I'm, there's also like tapestries that you style stuff that you can do, like pictures of hummingbirds and faces and things that people have done that the patterns are out there as well. Um, so I will probably move more towards that kind of a thing once I've got the techniques down, but I'm sticking with the patterns that are in the kit to begin with to learn the techniques. Um, the next work in progress, uh, so let's stick with weaving. Um, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will have seen the first part of a how to use a peg loom video. If not, feel free to go and check it out. I've done a bit more weaving um, on my, my pouch for my pegs, for my peg loom. Um, I'm at the point where I want to change colour, but I want to show you guys how to do that. So I'm going to be doing some filming later in the week. Um, for you guys to show you how to change colour and to finish off using the peg loom but that's that's where I'm at at the moment I'm just using leftover yarn from my throwback sweater um that I knit ages ago so it's the one I'm wearing in the, the logo for the channel so that's my weaving at the moment I do need to warp up the inko loom at some point and uh, either fix or get a new tapestry loom uh, frame loom so I can do some of that because that got a bit warped in the move. Um, so yes, that's the weaving stuff. Uh, last month I showed you my temperature cross stitch. Um, I am now up to date to the end of February. Um, so I'm gathering the temperatures for March now and uh, next month I'll show you where, where how it looks with March added on. So for those of you that are unaware, the temperature cross stitch works in much the same way as the temperature blankets in that you choose a colour for each band of temperature and you have a section that um, reflects the temperature of each day. I'm using the highest temperature and on this pattern it's a 5x5 five five stitch square for each day and you start in the middle and work your way around. So I've, I've got as far as the end of February now. Um, so yeah, so that's going and obviously I've got my Plague Doctor needle minder because I am actually parking on this project. It's, it made sense to park with the temperature to blank, the temperature cross stitch because you're using each colour for like a five by five square and then you may need to come back to the same colour in a few days. It made sense to, to park it, but the colours are quite easily distinguishable from day to day. It's not like I've got 50 gazillion colours like you would for a heaven and earth design. Um, that being said, I am planning on doing a heaven and earth design, which I probably will park for. Um, so it's good practice of, of parking. It's not a technique I've used before for cross stitch because I tend to, I don't tend to do as many full coverage ones and I'll, I'll tend to do like one colour for a section and then move on to another colour. Um, but I, I do want to get into to the parking for, because with, I think with the heaven and earth designs it's going to be far easier to, to park than to, to not with the number of colours that they use and the, the level of detail that they get into with their shading. Um, so that's kind of plans as well as, as a, a work in progress. I do have one more work in progress, uh, two more works in progress to show you. Um, one is knitting. You've seen this project before. Um, it is one that I cast on a New Year's Eve. It's not attached to a ball of yarn at the moment because I'm about to change colour. Um, and it is the Winter Lights Shawl. I will put a picture of the uh, original up on the screen because I'm all bunched up on the needles here. So we've got our raised section at the moment at the top and we've got our bubbles and we've got our honeycomb we've got more bubbles and i'm working on the the wavy border at the moment i'm just about to add in my um third contrast color which will get me to the end of the pattern and then i'll decide whether i want it longer or not i have a feeling it's going to grow quite a bit when i um block it though um and i believe it's an eye cord cast off on this one as well which will take a bit of time this will be my first Stephen West pattern. It's a pretty much half circle shawl, although it it seems to be ones that look a little bit more like the Millennium Falcon. Um, 
in the pictures of the finished objects. It was part of the high bin it's along, um, but I forgot when it finished, so I didn't worry about trying to get that done by date. So that's my knitting work in progress. It's very, very nearly finished. I would be very surprised if it's not finished by next time I podcast um, at the beginning of April. Um, I haven't worked on the lace shawl at all this month. Um, as I said before, I do need to have a block of time with good lighting for that one because it's super fine yarn and super tiny beads. Um, so that will be coming. My final work in progress is again a different craft that I've had a little bit of a try with. Now, this is very nearly finished, it just needs painting. And that is this little bowl. Now this is made out of um, the medical plaster bandages that you use to make plaster cast out of. Um, so I had a, a sugar bowl that I wrapped in, in cling film or saran wrap if you're in, in the States. Um, and then I put the, the bandages over it. So you soak them first, put them over it, let them dry. And then you take the bowl out because the cling film has stopped it sticking. Um, and now I'm ready to, to paint it. My original thought was I've got a, a macrame shelf in the hall that we put our keys on and things. So my, my thought was to put this on the shelf and put the keys in it. But um, my partner is a little bit worried that we might accidentally break it because it might get knocked. Um, so I'm going to find somewhere else to put it and find something else to put on that shelf. Because he doesn't want things getting damaged that I've put the time and effort into making, which is it's fair enough, really. I and mean, I don't think it's as delicate as it looks. It is quite thin. Um, but being bandaged wrapped in plaster of Paris, it's not like having porcelain or something on the side. Um, but yeah, I can I can see where he's coming from. So we're going to find a new home for that once it's painted and a new use for it. Um, it might have uh, seed beaded uh, bracelets and things put in. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need to find a home for all this bead weaving that I'm going to be doing. But, uh, yeah. So that is all my works in progress. So in terms of plans moving forwards, we've got Sock Madness starting this month. In fact, the qualifying pattern dropped today. So prepare to see a lot of socks on my Instagram feed. Um, there will also be some more spinning and working with hand spun going on for fluff to stuff. Um, winter light shawl will be finished soon. Hopefully I'll, I'll feel it in the, the mood and feel like I've got the right lighting to get more of the lace shawl done as well, because I'd like to get that finished. I'm on the border on that one. Um, and yeah, there'll be some running as well. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I've started doing the Couch to 5K again. Now, I used to run a fair bit, at least once a week, usually two or three times. Um, that's because in the mid-20-teens, I actually signed up to the London Marathon as a non-runner and then got into running and joined Park Run and found a little tribe there. So it's, I haven't done that for, for a while we moved and it was hard to get to park run and it, once you're out of the habit of going it's very easy to just sort of forget about running and um, so I haven't run for a few years now when I did catch to 5k before um I'd been cycling 10 miles to work and 10 miles home again so my fitness level was was fairly reasonable and um, that's not the case this time around so it's been a bit of a struggle I've got one more run to do for, for, for week one um I'm using the hashtag corner of cardio which was generated by hannah at corner of craft obviously i've been watching a lot of her because bead weaving um so yeah so it's like having a little running club on instagram it's keeping us accountable so yeah plans wise socks for sock madness spinning and hand spun for fluffed stuff car car corner of cardio catch to 5k and yeah probably something with beads once i work out what to do with the beads that i've got left over from knitting projects and um, so yeah so that's all coming up Next weekend, the next video will be going up, which will be the next stages in the peg loom weaving. Um, so changing colour and finishing off the project. So look out for that next week. If you haven't already liked and subscribed um, down below, do that because then that will tell you when I put that video up. Um, and ding the, the bell that gives you notifications as well. That's kind of handy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm aiming to put a video up every weekend. I'm not going to say for certain whether it's going to be Friday, Saturday or Sunday, just because schedules are in flux at the moment for everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm just going to weekend, weekends, there will be a video. Um, so far this year, I've managed one a week, so I'm hoping to keep that going over the course of the year. Um, so, yeah, peg loom next weekend. And let's see what's next after that. I do have plans for what's coming up for the rest of the month. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. If you wait for the notification.
it's another reason to ding that bell. Uh, all my my uh, where to find me's are down below as well, and as I say all my links to to the projects and patterns and fabrics and stuff will be down below. Um, off Ravelry where I can, on Ravelry where I can't, but I will say next to the link if it's a Ravelry link, because uh, I know that's not suitable for everybody at the moment. Um, okay, so that's all from me. Um, so until I see you next time, which will be in about a week, happy crafting and bye-bye for now. <laughs>